and welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we're going to be trying a new puzzle by Samantha Mukherjee. Um, now, Samantha's been appearing on Cracking the Cryptic for years now, and always with very interesting puzzles. But I've noticed in the last two or three puzzles from Samantha, they've all been sort of jaw-droppingly clever. And the test to say this is another of those. It's called Perpetual Motion of Kind Zero, which... I don't really understand. I thought that there were different types of perpetual motion according to which law of thermodynamics was broken. But I don't I didn't realize there was a zeroth law of thermodynamics. So I'm I'm lost. You guys, the scientifically minded among you, and I know there are many watching watching the channel will have to explain in a very detailed comment um, meant for simple people exactly exactly what's going on there. Um, and I'll read the rules of this one in just a moment. A couple of things to mention first. Firstly, I'd like to do a shout out actually to Brittany Spisak. Now, Brittany, I hope I'm saying your surname cor correctly, but your husband, Michael, got in touch and said that you've been enjoying the channel for a while. And I understand you've had something of an eventful May in which you turned 30, I believe. You, you graduated from law school and you discovered that your uh, you're about to have your first child as well. So an absolutely amazing month. Um, I hope it's made one scintilla better by us uh, us calling out your name here and that you have had a splendid birthday, 30th birthday. Gosh, yeah, that's, that's a little while ago for me, uh, at least a couple of years anyway. <laughs> and I hope you had lots of cake, of course. Uh, now, next, I need to announce the winner of our uh, May monthly reward over on Patreon. Drum roll, please. Can't do the special effects, but the winner is Colin Taylor. Very well done, congratulations. You completed, you not only completed the equal sum lines hunt, but you, your name was drawn out of a hat of two and a half thousand people. So that is, um, that is your lucky day. <laughs> and uh, there will be a Bubba is you key on its way to you uh, once this video finishes and I managed to send the email. Um, now, what next? Anything else? I can't remember. There was something else. I'm sure I was meant to tell you something. Yes, I have remembered it. Many of you have written to us over the last few months to say you wanted to buy a copy of our book, but were unable to do so because you didn't participate in the Kickstarter. You never found Cracking the Cryptic uh, at that time. Well, I can tell you that we do have some spare copies of the book available. So if you would like to get a copy of the book, there is a chance. Um, we don't have loads, uh, uh, so I apologize if you want one and you, you don't get one. But if you would like one, I'm going to put a link under the video uh, go there and order it. And if you're among the first few uh, people who do that, you will you will find uh, you should be able to get hold of one. And um, yeah, quite a book it is too. So I, I wish you luck. Um, anyway, let's get on with Perpetual Motion of Kind Zero by Samantha. And these are the rules. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Uh, digits along a thermometer must increase from the bulb end. So there's loads of thermometers scattered around the screen, although no long thermometers, which is a bit suspicious. So what that means is if this square is a two, this cell has to be higher than two because like mercury, as mercury would rise along thermometers, so must our digits. So two, five, eight would be a completely legitimate way of filling at that thermometer. Um, a black dot separates cells containing digits with a one to two ratio, which is a complicated way of saying that this domino contains digits where one of these digits is double the other one. So if that was an eight, this must be a four because it couldn't be a 16. This is normal Sudoku. Um, a white dot separates um, uh, cells containing consecutive digits. So these two digits here have to be consecutive. So if we worked out this cell was a one, we would know this cell had to be a two because it must be consecutive with one. Not all dots are given. All that's telling us is it's perfectly possible, for example, for these two cells to contain consecutive, consecutive digits. There doesn't have to be a white dot between consecutive digits. There just is between, we definitely know these are consecutive, these are consecutive, and these are consecutive, etc. Um, digits on a blue line must be numerically in between the two circled cells at the line's ends. So this is a between line constraint. So that means that these digits, which we put on the line, imagine this was two, three, and four. 
then these two digits would have to, one of them would have to be a one because it must be lower than the lowest digit on the line let's say that one and this digit would have to be higher than the highest digit on the line which is a four so it could be a six a seven an eight or a nine couldn't be five only because of sudoku otherwise it could also have been a five so that's quite interesting we don't do many between line puzzles um the orange line contains three consecutive digits in any order the biggest of those digits is divisible by three <laughs> what the heck is going on here right so let me just think about that for a moment okay i that's quite interesting and i i i, I it's tempting to get on with solving. I think I suggest thinking about this orange line quite early in the solve. Um, the biggest of those digits is divisible by three. The inequality sign, oh, there is an inequality sign. The inequality sign points to the lower of the two digits. Okay, so we know this cell is bigger than this cell. And that is all the rules, I think. Yes, it is. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking and let's start with the orange line because because one of the things that must be true that well these thermometers are very powerful actually in the context of a line that has its highest div digit divisible by three because we therefore know that the highest digit is either a three or a six or a nine. Now let's imagine for a moment it was a six, then we would know that this was a four, five, six triple. But then where would we put one, two and three in box five? Because we couldn't put one, two and three on the thermos anymore. So we'd have to stuff them both into or all three of them into these two cells, which would require one of them to be a Schrodinger cell. And even in a puzzle dealing with perpetual motion of kind zero, that will not work. So. I think this has to be a one, two, three, triple. I mean, obviously if this was seven, eight, and nine, it's even worse. We then have problems with not just one, two, and threes, but with four, fives, and sixes as well. So these are one, two, and three. And that means that four must be up here, I suppose, by Sudoku. I don't usually do Sudoku this early in a puzzle. So that is slightly strange. Um, and okay now i fear that we may be stuck right so let's have a think about the between lines for a moment or two simply to refresh my mind about how they work i think the idea with these is that you can't put ones and nines on the between lines because obviously if you do if you do put a one on the blue line you now need one of these circles to be lower than one and there are no sudoku cells lower than, or digits lower than one so ones and nines are not in these cells or these cells right okay i see what you're doing here I see what you're up to, Samantha. <laughs> That's very interesting indeed. Okay, so I think we have a bit of a sea creature theme to this puzzle, if I'm not mistaken, because where does one go? Given one can't go in on the blue line or and one is not equal to five, and one can never go at the end of a thermo, because if it did, what would you put in the bulb of the thermo? A digit lower than one, and there are none. So in this row, we can see that the one lives in a yellow cell. But that logic is identical, or virtually identical, these thermometers are slightly differently positioned, but it's the same point, in row seven. And that gets us thinking about where one can go in the rest of the grid. Well, how about row four? Now, one, I think, in that row is locked into the same columns again, because one can't go in these because of this one, two, three triple, which is obviously why this is here now I, now I think about it. And one can't go 
in any of these, well, these cells, this cell, or this cell for the same reasons again. So that means that we have actually got a jellyfish at the start of this. This is what this, this pattern is called. It's where a digit is locked into four different rows of the, the, the Sudoku in the same four columns, or vice versa. It could be in, you know, locked into the same, f f in the same, well, looking at the columns, it could be locked into the same four rows, if you see what I mean. Either of those is called a jellyfish, which is like the fourth dimension of fish in a Sudoku. So you've got X wings, then swordfishes, now jellyfishes. And the implications of a jellyfish are well, they're at least they're, well, they're very interesting in general, but they might be fascinating in the context of this puzzle because what is the effect of us knowing that the ones in these rows are locked into the same four columns? And the trick is, if you're not sure about what this means, the trick is to ask a very facetious, silly question, which is, how many ones are we expecting there to be in column two of this puzzle? The answer to that is one. There will be one one in this column. There will be one one in this column, assuming we correctly complete the puzzle, that is, but there will be one one. There will be one one in this column, and there will be one one in this column. So we know that in these four columns all together, there will be four ones. But we also know that our yellow squares contain four ones because we know there's a one in the one in row three is in one of the yellows. The one in row four is in one of the yellows, so, etc. So that means that we can't be adding one, you know, we can't have a one in a blue cell that isn't yellow because if we do, we will break the logic that we've already discovered. And let's just prove that to ourselves. Let's try and make this a one and see what happens. Well, now none of those yellow cells could be ones anymore. But we know the one in this row has to be in one of these cells. Well, let's put it here just for the sake of exposition. Now these can't be ones anymore. Which means, so where are we gonna put the one in this row? We've got a choice here or here, it won't matter. Let's put it here. And now where are we gonna put the one in this row? We've only got one option now, it can be here. And now we have a big problem because where are we gonna put the one in row seven? There is nowhere for it to go. So don't do these things. Don't put ones in any cells in these columns that are not, that don't have a yellow flash. Now, why is that looking interesting to me here? Well, it's because we're instantly locking ones out of certainly the between nine circles I'm just going to let me just think about this for a second or two. So there is no. These could never have been ones anyway because of the one, two, three, triple. Let me just think about this. This looks weird to me. Right. Wow. Okay. That's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. Okay. This, this is quite, quite ridiculous. Uh, I might get rid of my blue highlighting here to show this, I think. So what we've got to just, just remember that in these columns, the ones must live in yellow cells. Now that means, let's think about, let's start by asking what this means for this between line, because I think this is important. If you cannot put a one in one of these circles, what is the implication for what digits you cannot put on the blue line anymore? And the answer to that is if you can't put a one in a circle, you can't put two on the line. Because if you put two on the line, you need a one in the circle because you can't put any lower number than one in the circle. Now. Why is that interesting? Well, have a look at this row again now. 
and ask yourself where two goes in it. Because two can't go here. Because if two was here, this would be a one. And that's impossible because of the jellyfish. So two is not here. It's not on the line. And it's not equal to five. So in this row, we know that there is a two in a yellow square. But then in this row, it's the same logic again. This can't be a two because that would be required to be a one. None of these can be two because of this. And this can't be a two because that would be required to be a one. And that's dealt with by this. So again, we've got the same restriction here. Let's check this one. Where does the two go? It can't go here. This would need to be a one. It can't go in any of these because of the triple. It can't go there. So here it's the same. And here it's going to be the same again. We can't put twos in these cells because if you do, you need to put one in a bulb and that breaks the jellyfish. So that means that our jellyfish on ones has just become a jellyfish on twos. And it's going to go again, isn't it? It's iterative. And it's only going to stop when this triple ceases to affect these cells. I think we're going to have. So I think we've now, I think there's going to be a jellyfish on ones, twos and threes. Let's just, let's just think this through. So we've now established there's a jellyfish in the yellows on twos, which means two can't go in these cells. The effect on the between line is that we can no longer put three on the between line because if we do, we need a two or a one in the circles, neither of which is possible because of our two jellyfishes. So that means that three in this row, it can't go here because this would need to be a one or a two ruled out by jellyfishes. Can't go here, it's not there. So that works. Where does three go here? Can't go here, this would need to be a one or a two. Can't go here, this is a three already in the box. Can't go here because this would need to be a one or a two. It's the same logic, isn't it? All the way down. So now, now this square can't be a three because this yellow, the yellows are catering for jellyfish on ones, twos and threes. Now that means, ones, twos and threes, this can't be a three. So you can't put a four on the line. So if you can't put a four on this line, because you need a one, two or a three here, and you can't put a five on this line, and you can't put a nine, oh, this is ridiculous. It's just ridiculous, isn't it? So yeah, okay, so I now know what's on this between line. Because we've worked out, because of the jellyfish looking at this square, preventing it from being a one, two, or a three, you can't put four, three, two, or one on this, on this between line. You also don't seem to be able to put five on it. So you can only put six, seven, and eight on it because you can't put nine on it. That means one of these needs to be a nine, and one of them needs to be an unjellyfished digit, which is lower than six. So it's a four or a five. So these are four, five, or nine. And this is not five. And that, I have to tell you, that is absolutely ridiculously clever from Samantha. These, these little vignettes of recursive logic that you sometimes get in Sudoku. It is it's just beautiful. Now, can we repeat that logic down here? Or is it a little bit less potent because of the absence of a five looking at it? So we know we can't put four on this between line because that requires a one, two or a three in the circles ruled out by the jellyfish. We've got to remember the yellow jellyfish is a one is a jellyfish on ones, twos and threes. Um, so I can't put four on the line. So this is from five, six, seven and eight. If it, uh, which might lead to an X wing on nines actually. Um, so these two digits are fours, fives, eights, and nines, depending on what we put on the thing. We could have an eight in one of these if this was five, six, seven. 
and then then we need a four or if this was yeah and there's that this doesn't have to be consecutive either although those two digits do so right what does all this mean i'm sure it means something very important so this digit is now six seven or eight only because it's it's got to be higher than five but it can't be nine because there's a nine needed in one of these this digit is is not four five it's not one two three so that is six seven or eight and this is seven eight or nine um okay can we keep that going somehow what about this cell this cell cannot be one two or three and it cannot be well it cannot be eight can it because then both of the tips would have to be nine so this is four five six seven only I think I think this has only those options which means these cells have got to be higher than that which is actually that's a sort of good lift levels of pencil marking we're getting into now which is probably not what we're meant to do so okay what is it we are meant to do with our newfound knowledge of jellyfishes <laughs> between lines um i don't know it's okay it's possible i mean it's very rare i've had to think about a jelly a jellyfish at all let alone jellyfish jellyfishes on ones twos and threes so this digit is at least a four which means this digit is at least a five so maybe this is the point maybe we're going to get run into sort of quadruples or quintuples on five six seven eight and nine this digit again because of the jellyfish it's at least a four it's at least a four which means this is a five six oh yeah hang on hang on hang on so this square can't be six ah that's right good, good. this is it this tiny little thermo is where we're meant to focus because we've got five six seven and eight looking at its tip and yet this its bulb cannot be one two and three because of the jellyfish so this has to be a nine uh, which is the least actually that's the least exciting thing it could be because it doesn't really affect its bulb very much ah but what it does do is it tells us which of these between lines is the nine the nine that needs to frame the eight on the between line it's not this one so that means this cell is a nine which means this cell is not a nine which is nearly interesting isn't it so if i could get rid of if i could get rid of nine from here then i would know this was five six seven um in fact look at that i've got a five six seven eight quadruple in row seven now what okay what about this one then yeah i think all of these little tiny thermos are much more constrained than they first appear there's all sorts of stuff going on actually as i look at it now look i think we're going to get into very heavy heavy pencil marking we've got five six seven eight nine quintuple there so that gives a one two three four quadruple in the row this little thermo uh, because of the jellyfish we know this is this is a four at least which means this is a five at least well it can't be five so this is six seven eight or nine which again is sort of getting into the realms of being very important isn't it so 
So, okay, how do we, how do we get more traction here. So now this one can't be 7 because that would require an 8 9 pair in the tips which can't exist. So this is for just this is down to 4 5 or 6 now. This one is that restricted? Again, it can't be 1 2 or 3 because of the jellyfish. So it's at least 4 and it can't be it can't be 8 because this can't be 9. So this is 4, 5, 6 or 7. And... Okay. Okay, now I'm stuck. Uh, am I actually stuck or is this... Or am I not exactly stuck? I feel like I am stuck. Five, six, seven. What can we do here? <laughs> oh, come on, Simon. Don't get stuck on this puzzle. That would be an absolute... It would be sacrilege, wouldn't it? I'm struggling to see quite how to use these implications that we've learned. The, oh, that... Ah! Oh, God! I know what I've missed. I know what I've missed. You've all been shouting at me, haven't you? Well, you have to forgive me. That is a very small, it's a very small inequality sign. But it is a very important inequality sign because this this cell has to be greater than this cell. So this can't be nine. And if that that's it now, because now eight is the highest digit that can frame this. So this hasn't got eight on it. So this is five, six, seven, which means it needs to be a four. Uh, that frames the five. So this is a four eight pair, which means this is not four eight, which means this is not four, which means that is not five by thermo logic. Um, this is five six seven. So this is eight. That's just eight by Sudoku. Therefore, this is four. This is eight. Oh, Samantha, you are you've outdone yourself here, my friend. This is just superb. Now this is a nine by Sudoku. So that's not nine. So that's not eight. Um, these are not eights anymore, so that means this can't be six because we have to double seven this column. So this is down to just four or five. This four sees this, so this is five. This is not five, therefore. Um, which is probably in some way important. Okay, so what have we learned now? We've got... Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> We've got... Okay. Uh, so if this is five, this is a six, seven pair. This is a six, seven, eight triple. Oh, right. There is a, that is very, very strange indeed. Is that really true indeed? Right. Look at look at column one and column nine here. In the context of these triples. Because. Six, seven and eight in this row have to find have to find a home. Now, yeah, this is rev. This is definitely interesting. I'm not sure how powerful it is, but it's definitely interesting. Where is the home of six, seven, and eight in row two? Well, they're not in these cells, and they're not in those two cells. So they're they're in three of these four cells. Now, what would happen if we put them in both in those cells? Well, the the, the thing that would be interesting about that would be it would complete. A five, six, seven, eight, nine quintuple in this column, and I believe a five, six, seven, eight, nine quintuple in this column. And that breaks the puzzle. Because now these squares cannot be five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that means I've got the same problem look in this row. I've got to put five, six, seven into 
three of these four cells. So there's like a weird balancing exercise going on. So I can put one of six, seven, and eight, and I, indeed I need to put one of six, seven, and eight in these two cells, but then I need to put one of five, six, seven into those two cells. And in each case, I'm completing a five, six, seven, eight, nine quintuple in the relevant row. Now, amongst other things, that means this cell cannot be a four, because if this was, if we had to put the six, seven, and eights in both those, we couldn't make the five, six, sevens work in row eight. So that square is not four. But the other thing it means, the other thing it means is that we have in effect got between these six cells in both of these columns, we've got quintuples on five, six, seven, eight, and nine which means that the other cells in these columns have to just be, well, these have to be from one, two, and three, because there's a four here. Um, and there's no four in this column. So these cells have got to be from one, two, three, and four. That can't be a four. This one, it, ah, this one sees a one, two, three, triple. So this is a weird, weird as you like naked single. That can only be a four. Oh, that's so beautiful. Good grief. Wow, that fixes this as a five, which means that this is now a six, seven pair. And now this square can't be six, seven or eight, which means it must be a one, two or a three which but it also means that must be a six, seven or an eight, which means that this must be a one, two or a three, which means this must be a five, six or a seven, and it can't be a six or a seven, so that's a five, which means this is not a five. Wow, wow, oh, look at this, look at, no, ah, nearly. I've got a one, two, three, four quadruple in box one, so, this can't be a one or a two because that would require a two or a four on the black dot. So this is six or eight. Oh, you rotten, rotten thing. You rotten, rotten thing. Are you serious? Um, well, okay, that's, that's, that's interesting. Look, it does give me a six, seven, eight, eight triple in the column but I don't think I can do better than that I might be able to I just have to think about it but I, can't, I can't see immediately how to do better than that so what else do we now know we've got that square not able to be a four because we've got a four here we've got six we've got loads of pencil marking yeah in fact and this puzzle in particular, I almost have to do the pencil marking because look, if I pencil mark row five, I get a six, seven, eight, nine quadruple out of nowhere in box six, which means these cells have to be one, two, threes and fives. That's on a white dot. So that cell can't be that big. Y yeah, in fact, look here. This is a one, two, three, four quadruple. So that's nearly, nearly good for this white dot, but not quite good enough. And oh, right now, look, I've got a one, two, three, four quadruple in box nine. And the four in that quadruple is in this domino, which means there's no, f oh, which we could have seen this four. Never mind. Oh, I've got a one, two, three, triple here now. So these are six, seven, and nine, which means I've got a quadruple in this column on six, seven, eight, nine, the nine in that quadruple has to be, oh anyway, yeah, okay, there's a six, seven, eight, so this is a nine, that's the point. Nine goes here. Nine's on this thermo, so it must be in the tip, that's beautiful. Nine in this, oh no, that's not very useful. Um, nine must be in one of these oh yeah okay where does nine go in this box that's a simple question to ask it can only go here now there's a six seven eight quadruple here so again 
We're looking for ones, twos, threes, and nines, aren't we? Into these cells. I don't think I've pencil marked a puzzle this liberally for a long time, but I do feel like it needs it. Um, I hope you guys can forgive me. Look, there's a five here, so that's not a five anymore. So now I've got a six, seven pair here. So these squares have to be from one, two, and three. Therefore, this can't be three and this can't be one. Yes, okay. Now I'm going to do the same thing in this row, look. These have to be from... Well, one of them has to be a... Uh, no, that's not right. One of them has to be a four. Um, and the other... Yes, these are from ones, twos, threes, and fours, aren't they? Just by the logic of the row. I think that's right. There's a five, six, seven, eight, nine quintuple. Now, so the four must be at the tip of the thermo. This can't be a one. This can't be a three. So now, ah, so now I've got a two, three pair in column five, and this has become a one. <laughs> and this is just magic. And now, what do we do next? We can, I don't know. I feel like we must be able to do something. But what is it? Oh, there's a four looking at that cell. So that's a three and that's a six. That's great. That's great. Okay. So that must help. Yeah, that gives me a seven down here and a six here. Six is greater than four. So our little inequality sign is very nice. Seven sees this six. That sees that cell. Does it see anything else? Yes, okay, look, sevens have to go exactly, yeah, this, this is an eight. This is a seven by Sudoku. This is a seven, this is a six. Therefore, this is a seven and this is an eight. Good grief, and now that's a six, which means this is an eight. absolutely remarkable this is this is just remarkable eight by sudoku's got to go here this square is no longer a three so this is a one two three or four it's not three it's one two or four and it's consecutive with this digit which just from a consecutive point of view makes it a one two four or five now can we get rid of anything else from this cell because it almost feels like this cell needs to work the magic to disambiguate the rest of the puzzle. Where does 7 go in this column? It can only go here. So this square's a 5 by Sudoku. We can get rid of 5s from these two cells. Oh, this one as well. Look, that's nearly done. Um... can see fours in one of these. If I knew this was four, that would force that to be three, and that would be powerful. The other way of getting at this, though, might be there. I'm not sure. Okay, so let's do some tidying up of our pencil marks and see if that helps us. Yeah, okay, so four is in this domino, so four is not in that domino, which means that four in this box is placed, which means that this square has can't be a three, so it has to be a five. Good grief. So this is not five anymore. The four in this box is now placed here, which is next to three on this, as we suspected. So that finishes off a load of stuff. One, two pair here gives me a three. Oh, I'm getting to the point where I'm thinking we might be able to solve this, which would be terrific. This is the sort of puzzle that needs to appear on the channel. It's just so... It's, it's frankly genius, isn't it? it? It really is so clever. That's not four by Sudoku, so this is four. I think it's, yeah, it might just be Sudoku now. Um, okay, let's see. So we need ones, twos, and nines into these cells, and that makes a little, look at that. 
That's a triple on 129, I think, which means that square's got to be a 3, which means that square's got to be a 2, and this square's got to be a 1, and that square's got to be a 1. And now this becomes a 2-9 pair, which makes this a 1, this a 2, this a 1, this a 1. So far it's still working. That 2 is very nice. 2 and the 3 can go in. That's a 1 there, that's a 2. Uh, the 6, 7 doesn't seem to be resolved. It probably is, I just can't see how. And this is a 1 now, which gets rid of a load of stuff down there. Okay. 3, is that doing some magic? Oh, please don't stop now. Right, this 5, 6, 7 triple. This domino must contain an even digit because every consecutive pair of digits will contain an even digit. So that must have six on it, which means this is not six. So this is definitely five or seven. These squares are three, four and eight. Some order, which we don't seem to know. So that's not four, that's not three. This one annoyingly seems to have lots of options. The two is fixing the two nine at the top. Is that doing, yeah, that gets me a three and a two here. That three looks nice. That's getting me eight, four and three in the bottom row. So now that, oh, that could never have been a, well, it could never have been a four once we thought about it in the context of the one, two, three triple. Um, this is not an eight. So it's, Maybe it's maybe we are going to have to use these thermos to sort of finally do the do the last pieces of this. Hmm, I'm not sure. Which of these columns is the most constrained? <laughs> I don't know. Eight. Maybe it is the thermos. Look, so eight has to be in one of these two positions. Now, if 8 was here, I'd have to put 9 here, which I can't do. So that does place the 8, which means this is the 8 on this line. So this is a 6-7 pair. 3 has to be in one of those two cells. And in this column, look, we've not placed... 4, 6 and 7. So this square has to be a 6 or a 7. Because it can't be 4, which places 4 in the column. Okay, well that's still useful. This column is just lacking for 5, 6s and 7s. And that cell can't be 5, because that would require a 4 here. That gets us the 6, 7 pair. It gives us a 5. We know there's a 6 in here. That's a 7, because this needed a, an even digit. So that's a 7. That's a seven, that's a six, that's a six. This has got to be a five because it's got to be between them for the thermo to work. Nine gets placed. I suspect that nine's been available for a while. I didn't spot it. Never mind. I don't care because we still seem to be doing the puzzle. The seven here does the seven and the six. Come on. And this is going to be a one, six. No, it's not a one, three pair. One, three. Yes. <laughs> I did it. I have discovered perpetual motion of kind zero. Samantha, that was that was quite incredible. That is quite incredible. Let's just let's just revisit for a moment what we did at the start of that puzzle. So we found a jellyfish on ones, which was well signalled actually, because the only thing I know about between nines is they can't have ones and nines on them. And that instantly refreshes itself and leads to a jellyfish in the same cells on two which leads to a jellyfish in the same cells on three and then these little thermos work magic around the grid and you find you can actually lock in you can lock in the contents of these between lines that is well i hope you agree that is simply stunning i look forward to the comments on this one with great interest because i think this is well we, we get to show a lot of genius creations on the channel but this is right up there. Absolutely loved it. Um, and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.